the church communication world, you don't always get positive feedback because if you've done your job well, nobody knows that you did your job, right? But if you're doing your communication job well and you only hear the negative stuff, it's really easy to get down and out. And I just want you to know that you're still making a difference in the kingdom of God. The small steps to improve communication, setting up connect cards, texting your members to be able to respond quickly to your members' voicemails, like all of that stuff is here to help ministries be successful. Hello and welcome to the Tech in Church podcast, where we talk to everyday church communicators who use simple tech tools to go from frazzled to focused. My name is Nina Hampton, and I'm here with my co-host, Jeanette Yates. We believe that you should spend less time worrying about technology and more time doing what you love in your ministry and in your personal life. Yes, that is right. And I am so excited because today's episode is extra special and, at least for me, a dream come true. Allow me to introduce to you my friend, fellow former church communicator, and current Talk in Church member success manager, April Buskey. April is here to share a new tool with us. Spoiler alert, it's Talk in Church. Uh, a new tool with us that will not only help you improve your communications, but also improve your ability to set healthy boundaries in your ministry and personal life. April, welcome to the show. Welcome to the team. All the things. Welcome. Hey, I'm super excited to be here today. Okay, so April, before we dive into all the tech talk, which you and I were talking yesterday about how we love nerdy things like tech, we're going to bring that nerd talk right into this podcast. But before we do that, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your, about yourself? I love hearing about your uh, text and church origin story, if you will. And so I want you to share it with everybody. <laughs> Sure. So, ah, goodness, talking about myself is always the most cringe thing ever, right? Like, it's like, okay, well, uh, so my background, I started out of college as a marketing solutions, um, in a marketing solutions company where we helped do rewards and um, loyalty marketing. And so uh, it was really a good fit for me because I got to use like my nerdy communication skills and I got to make sure that what we were doing, like there was measurable moments where I got to make sure that my communication was driving results, right? Fast forward a couple of years, there's a role that opens at my church, and I feel like um, every single thing that I did in that marketing role with um, call center work and training and marketing pieces, like that all made complete sense for ministry, right? It's like God knew what he was doing, and he prepared me across the board for all of those things. So I spent a decade working in my church, and I wore every hat from youth director to online campus minister to um, just the token person who knew what technology was. Um, and it was during that um, process, right before COVID, where we uh, figured out what text and church was. I think I attended an Engage conference and signed up and wasn't really sure what it was until I really got to the community and um, started implementing some of those uh, easy button strategies that, that y'all had back then that really helped communications go to the next level at our church. So after a decade of working at my church, I became a, well, I had become a mom after 10 years of working at my church. I became a mom and then I needed something with healthier boundaries with more set work hours and began looking and um, talk in church was just getting ready to launch. And I threw my ring for a position and somehow landed it. They took a leap of faith on me and that's how I got here. So, And I literally could not be happier that you threw that hat because now you're here yeah. and you're just like a part of the team. Like this is just, we're just having a meeting that we usually have. Like, yes. This is just a chill conversation. It's great. So talking about that and talking about, you know, everything. So that kind of segues us right into talk in church. So I think before we talk about what talk in church is, why don't we talk about maybe some of the problems that churches face that talk addresses? Well, and she's already mentioned one, which is boundary. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, <laughs> April, why don't you tell us? So uh, in my church experience, I found that uh, my ministry required me to be mobile, but at the same time, I was chained to my desk to deal with getting phone calls, getting messages. If I was in the church building and somebody called for me, I'd hear my secretary running down the hall saying, April, there's a call. And I'd have to run back to my office and then she'd be like, okay, I'm transferring you now. Are you ready? And um, yeah, so it was kind of that weird place of I needed to be all around the building. I needed to be out in the community, but I was still tied to the, the desk. Uh, 
the other thing is I was single when I started in ministry and I got married. And when I left my church after 10 years, they still hadn't figured out how to update my name in the phone system because the directory was just so hard to use. Um, Yikes. And <laughs> that is know. so relatable, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure my voice is still when you call the church. I still think it's my voice doing the things. But anyway, yes, that's very relatable. <laughs> My voice is still the Christmas service times. Every year when those pop up, they're just going to slide that audio back in, right? Like that's the game plan. Uh, and then I think the other thing that was really hard was the amount of work that voicemails generated that I couldn't do automatically. So like you'd get a post-it note saying, so-and-so wants to register their, register their kid for the youth retreat. Can you send them how to do that? And so then it would be like going into one system, looking up their email going into another system, sending them a note with a link from a third, you know, third place. And so um, I feel like talk in church can really help across the board with um, making sure that you get uh, those calls delivered wherever you're at. So you're not scurrying down the hallway in a panic trying to get somebody. Uh, I don't have to go to the, you know, you don't have to go to the office to check your voicemails. You can get those wherever and you can use talk in church to not only send out registration information to people like uh, but you can also use it to respond by text or phone call right away from within the system so it just really makes phone like the phone more intuitive and more focused for the needs of churches like the big complex systems are designed for big complex businesses and you need like a tech degree and an it person and thousands of dollars of equipment we're talking church is really designed for churches are intuitive to use and you can get up and running in 30 minutes or less. And I love that about talking church. You talked about some of the thing, the ways that helps. Can you actually break down some of the actual features? So how does that, what are some of those features that help solve those problems? Sure. So uh, we talked a moment about boundaries and how um, it's really important to have those. And I felt like my social number was everywhere with talk and church because you can get your phone calls delivered anywhere through um, cell signal. Um, you can get a call from your church number to your phone anywhere you're at. But the power is setting up your caller profile. When you set that up, you can say these are the times that I want times and days that I want to receive phone calls. And you can make sure that your family dinner, your kid's birthday party, your soccer game that you're going to, all of those things are protected. You still know that the call is getting cared for because if it's outside of your hours, it goes straight to your voicemail. So your caller profile, you can set that up to receive calls when you want them, to, for them to go to voicemail or to a different team member. And you were talking about that so that you can enjoy your family time or, or have your own time, your self-care time. We talked about that this morning too, April. But I also thought about, you know, we talk a lot on this call about the multiple ministry hats that we wear as church communications people. And whether you're a pastor or church admin, you know, administrative assistant, youth group person, you, you probably are wearing more than one hat. And sometimes you want to be able to focus on just the ministry that you're working on right now. Like, <laughs> I know that that happens. Uh, uh, one of my, uh, the people that works at my church he is constantly talking to you and answering, you know, voicemails and text messages and all these things because, you know, they haven't in implemented talk in church yet. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, this idea of like, sometimes it's about personal boundaries, but sometimes it's about those ministry boundaries too. Like I need to be focusing in on this pastoral, you know, counseling session or praying with this family, even though another family might need prayer, I'm with this family. So th those boundaries are so important. What other features will um, help us with? Um, so you talked a little bit about um, we could respond with a text message, like if somebody wants to know more about. So can you talk a little bit about like the menu aspect of text and church or talk in church? <gasps> yes. So in talk in church, you can set up a really <laughs> customizable digital receptionist and your digital receptionist is what. Um, can greet your incoming calls with things like, hey, thanks for calling such and such church. If you, parties extension, you can dial it anytime. And you can program every one of those menus to sound like who your church is, to broadcast the information um, that's important to your church and to resource your congregation well. Uh, so our template starts off with a, a great um, showcase of the power of talk in church and the power of the digital receptionist. Two of my favorites is that you can use the digital receptionist to send a text message. 
And then the other thing that I've seen that I really love is that you can use the digital receptionist to capture a voicemail that then goes outside of talk and church so that you can equip your laity to be able to do the work that they need as well. Um, I did not know that. <laughs> I learned I'm something so about talking church. I can go on for hours, but the power of sending the text message though, uh, people are like, Oh, well I can tell them when my service times are, but I saw this church doing a really cool thing where um, every time they have a special event, they put it in their number one spot. So like press one. Right. So when they don't have a special event, they just start with press two. They take out the sentence about press one. But that press one sentence is like to learn more about Vacation Bible School, press one. To learn more about our Fall Fest, press one. To hear about our East, um, our Easter festivities, press one. To, you know, so they leave that first sentence for um, whatever special is going on in their church. And then when you press one, um, you hear the next thing, which is like for Vacation Bible School, they did our Vacation Bible School is such and such days and times. It's no cost to the community. Press one to get a link to register a student. Press two to get a link to sign up to volunteer. Or press three to get a link for our Amazon wish list showcasing the supplies we're hoping to collect. So not only did you send, like, you, you saved your secretary the time of writing a note, a post-it note, right? Running down the hall and then you having to, like, go back, find that person's information and email them the link, right? You just added your time back into your life. And Nina, your face said it all. (laughs) I just, I I always get so like, I I think my favorite thing about like having conversations with the church leaders that we've had, but even like when, when Caleb's been on the pod, like whatever, all the things like is learning about like these specific use cases. Cause I, I, that's genius. I would have never thought to do that. That's so smart. And it's so funny. I was actually talking to my, my sister, she actually just started working at her church that she's been serving at, like just attending with her family for the last year. And they were like, hey, we have a position that we think that you'd be perfect for. And she was like, you don't even really know me, but okay. And so now she works at the church as the, the, the discipleship director and she's killing it, right? She's doing an amazing job. But one of the things that was really cool, she's she's my older sister. She's five years older than me, but we're kind of in the same season of life. And so we talk well, every day. Like I talk to her every day. And <laughs> she was... One of the things that she's over, she goes to a larger church like here in the Casey area and um, being the discipleship coordinator, she's over all the life groups, Um, meaning that she like all the changes to all the life groups and their attendance sheet and everything like she is. That's her thing. That's what she does. And so her phone is ringing off the hook. My sister is also a homeschooling mom of four who does not work full time. And she told like whenever she was approached with working at the church, she's like, this is great. This is amazing. I would love to. But also I need some of my hours to be able to be work from home. And so it was and so she they finessed that and she's now working partially from home. But it was so funny. One of the like moments she was just like venting to me, just like in frustration. She was like, people are calling my office phone and I'm trying I'm not trying to give everybody my, my mobile number. And I just I can't people can't get a hold of me. It's driving me nuts. And I was like, hey, solution. <laughs> I was like, I have a little bit of a shameless plug for you right now. Uh, you should talk to the church about getting talking church because it literally would solve your exact issue. You are why we created this tool. It, that's literally why, because of what you literally just said just now. Because she's at home on her kitchen table while her kids are doing their recess time in the middle of the day after they've eaten lunch, you know, and she's trying to update these attendance sheets for this upcoming Sunday. And she's getting emails that, hey, this person called and this person called. She's like, they could just call me now. I mean, my kids are in the background, but it's fine. Like, we're all church family. Like, it's okay. And it was just it was just such a cool opportunity. Like, hey, shameless plug. This is literally why we created this, because we heard that story time and time again. What happens when you start to give your number out is then you feel like you have to answer it no matter what. So like, her, no ma- like if she was still like teaching a session, would she feel the guilt of not answering that call? And I did when I was given out my phone. And I think that's part of what makes talking church so powerful is you have that privacy, um, privacy guarantee that when somebody calls your church and it gets sent to your cell phone number, nobody's seeing that number. Like you dial the church number. When you call out using the text and church app, you're seeing the church number. Like. So that helps remove that layer of like guilt, but also the freedom to work wherever you're at. Yeah. It all sounds really complicated to set up all those menus. But from what I understand, talking church, that the team that worked on the development of this product fixed that. They solved that problem for us. Tell us 
how easy it is to set up your Talk in Church account? Well, if it tells you anything, the very first time that I set up Talk in Church for me and my demo account, I was able to get it up and running in less than 30 minutes. And so uh, I want to give you that assurance that like I'm not I'm not an IT person by any means. Like I can nerd out on some like technical gadgets that I have, but I'm not the person programming them, right? Um, so it's really simple to navigate. This, the system was designed with church leaders in mind. Y'all are brilliant church leaders, but you're brilliant in communicating the word of God, communicating with your people about like, doing ministry. We didn't want you to have to be brilliant in IT too. So it's very simple. The interface is really intuitive. And if you need help or you're unsure, we have an amazing support team and success team here to help you every step of the way. So you're not doing it alone either. You've got a team of people on your side. That's right. And I all I love the member experience team and all the different ways they step in to help. Um, yeah, Nina, shout out to Nina and crew um, and you too, because um, Nina is the member. It, yeah, it was just as much in it as I think her too. Like Nina, yeah. Nina, you are the member success manager for Text and Church. I April am. is the member success for Talking Church. So they both have that kind of hat that they wear. But the teams are really great, not and they can really walk you through. Like, so if you're just like, yeah. I just need to know, I just have two questions, that's no problem. Or if you're like, no, seriously, <laughs> I need if, even if you come to us and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing, right. we're like, that's okay because we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so we'll walk you through all the things. And that's it's our okay. entire job is helping churches get up and like up and running and be successful with talking yes. church. So like I do Zoom calls with our members all the time for strategy, but also just for little things like, how do I set this up? I'm here for you. Yes. Like you're not yeah. alone. In this. Yep. I got you. Yeah. I even love, I think some of my favorite conversations are when people are like, I don't necessarily need to know how, like how to use the system, but I need to know how to use the system. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I have an idea. I want to use this. We have a church car wash coming right. up as a fundraiser. Can I do it for that? And I'm like, all the ideas. Yeah. Let me tell you all of my ideas. <laughs> yeah. Like, those are some of my favorite conversations. And then um, sometimes they're like, I don't even need you to tell me the ideas. I just want you to tell me this one, just show me this one little thing. And then the next yeah. time, some people want to know it all ahead of time. Some people want to know it in chunks. And no matter how you prefer to learn or how you prefer to get this up and running, you can go to the help center. You can come to a live um, training where you, where April walks you through that or meet with her one-on-one -on -one or any of the members of the other, uh, any other members of the team. So we try to make it as easy as possible. So that was kind of a softball because yeah. I know that it's like, is it really hard? No, it's not hard. It's easy. <laughs> but there are some other obstacles besides just the up setup. And running quick. Yeah. So there's other obstacles besides just setting things up. So that that talk in church really solves. And so can you hit some of those other things that churches often face and just how uh, just real quickly how talk in church solve those solves those other obstacles as well? Yeah, so I think a lot of churches really face that. How do you stretch your ministry dollars? And we all want to be incredibly good stewards of the money that we're entrusted with. And I feel like uh, when we were looking at phone systems with my church, it was either these systems that cost thousands of dollars or you had to use something that was pre-built out of the box. And I think that's the nice thing about talking church is that it's very customizable. It's very low cost in the grand scheme of things. And uh, we want to make sure that that you're using those money that the money that you're entrusted with like wisely and be good stewards of that. So um, there you don't find like tons of extra fees or add ons with talk in church. It's just really um, designed for you to maximize your ministry budget. Um, I had a, a church that that was telling me that they they added more than more callers than what they were quote unquote allowed for their plan. So we added those on um, and it was a decent amount of callers. When we added those on, uh, it brought her monthly bill to, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month with talk and church. Uh, then they told me what they were paying with their previous provider to add their 30 staff members. And it was exorbitant. They were saving a thousand dollars a month by switching to talk and church. Think about what that could do for your ministry. Like, I mean, there are ministries in my church that are funded on less than $12,000 a year, like fully funded on less than $12,000. That, that's a brand new ministry that you could launch in a lot of church contexts, right? So we do try and keep the cost of talking church really low because we know what's important to ministry and the ministry money. Um, 
another thing that we love about talking church is thinking of thinking through the strategy behind it of how to set up your system to maximize it so that your staff is free to do more ministry and less phone calls. So I was talking with um, a church out in Branson and they, which I just visited Branson for the first time, uh, 10 out of 10 would go back. Don't like the windy roads, but I loved everything. Else yeah. Uh, <laughs> Listen, for those of you who do not know what she's talking about, she's talking about Branson, Missouri. Okay. The hilly part of the glorious state that I've been raised in. So it was it's a nice little place. Stunningly beautiful. Windy roads. I had to take some. Surprisingly, up. right? It's like really scenic. And you're like, I'm in Missouri. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm from Iowa. Yeah. And everybody thinks Iowa is flat, but like it's hilly. So yeah. like it's nice to know that other states are thought of that way too. Like, oh, I thought Missouri was all flat. We Surprise. Are. We oh. feel your pain. Yes. <laughs> um, but I was talking with this church and they were like, We're in a tourist town every week. We get dozens of calls asking, when are your service times? It doesn't matter that they're on the website, right? Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like, people aren't going to the website first. They're just picking up the phone and calling. And um, what they did was they, you know, basically said, welcome or thank you for calling this Branson Church. Our service times are Saturdays at this time, Sundays at this time. And then they went into their menu options. They said it freed up so much time that it was like adding an extra staff person. How cool is it that saved so much time for them that they were able to use that person that was answering that phone to do ministry instead of just answering the phone and answering that one question that they get over and over and over again. So <laughs> And sounding excited to answer it for the right. <laughs> <one day. laughs> right. And it's not the you know 15th person's fault, like fault that they yeah, call. Right. Them. Exactly. Person, right. But you want a great experience. And that's a way that you can deliver a great experience without... Uh, getting tired of that question. So just as you, you know, we've, we've chatted about how, you know, like your whole job, my whole job, our whole job, um, is that we get to talk with our members, you specifically with talk, um, uh, and just hearing these stories, right. About like how it's actually like, no, it's really boots on the ground, making an impact. Like, it's not just something that we say, it's not something that's cute. That's like a catchy. No, I've, I've seen it. Like I've, I've heard the stories. I've in some cases cried with, the, the with the churches who are you know what I mean it, it being impacted by the change so what's what's your favorite thing about working with churches that are trying to onboard talk in church you know I think for me my favorite thing is like this is I still feel like this is ministry and that I'm still making a difference in the kingdom of God like what I'm doing is going to make heaven more crowded because it's training these churches or helping helping them set up systems so that they have um, the right things in place to get people to VBS. And because those kids went to VBS, well, now heaven's more crowded. And I think, you know, we, we, as church communicators, we sometimes feel a little bit like the job's thankless. Like the only time we hear, like when we've done, and this is, I like totally put on my church communicator hat, not my Texan church hat, because like at Texan church, like I always hear like the good things that I'm doing, but in the church communication world, you don't always get positive feedback because if you've done your job well, nobody knows that you did your job, right? Like people registered for the event, people you know knew what they needed to know, they found the bathrooms okay, like all the things went well. You only hear when things don't go well, right? And like, but if you're doing your communication job well and you only hear the negative stuff, it's really easy to get down and out. And I just want you to know that you're still making a difference in the kingdom of God. Like you're still making disciples by getting those people to the baptism night that they wouldn't have known about if you didn't put it on your outdoor sign. Like, yeah, sorry. I'm gonna like get on a soapbox and just preach about how important communication is. Uh, but it's so important and making the, like, the small steps to improve communication, setting up connect cards, texting your members, using talk in church to be able to respond quickly to your members' voicemails. Like all of that stuff is here to help ministries be successful. And I think that's what I love most about working with, like is seeing those like wins from churches, like, yeah. And hearing like, oh yeah, what you did made a difference. Well, I think sometimes, you know, like you said, communicate the communications, arm of the church isn't always seen as ministry. It's seen as administrative. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, you know, the more you work in it, the more you realize it is really a ministry uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And so I know that, um, you know, lots of us that work on this text and church team, we do still feel like it's very much ministry related. Um, you know, and at yeah. the, at the end of the day, um, sharing the gospel is communication. Like, <laughs> 
That's yep. what the word share means. It means communicate. Right. Um, <laughs> um, and so that's, you know, um, again, I'm on the soapbox with you, apparently. Um, so we, we can step off. Um, <laughs> and uh, so because we're preaching to the choir. Staying quiet. Right. I'm specifically saying quiet so I don't also get on yeah, the soapbox. <laughs> I will. I will and can. Heaven is crowded and so is the soapbox right now. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, well, I'm going to ask a, I'm going to ask two more questions. Okay. One though, you've shared some great stories. You've talked about your, the Branson church. You've talked about that church that, um, had the Amazon wish list. Mm -hmm. Um, but are there any more, we, you know, after all, this is all about stories, this, this whole podcast, Mm -hmm. it's all about stories. And so, uh, if you have any other fun stories to share about ways that, um, this technology has made a difference in the lives of the people working for a church and the people they serve. Mm-hmm. We would love to hear that. We'll give me the opportunity yeah. to share that now. I was talking with a church out in New England um, earlier this week, and their church is part of a network of churches that do these things called white flag, uh, white flag shelters. So like if there's extreme heat or extreme cold, like they open up a series of you know, shelters that are ad hoc that people can come to. Um, So one of the things that's been a huge challenge for this group of churches is, uh, you know, they put that information out on Facebook or they put that information out on a website, but, you know, people who are experiencing the need for those shelters don't necessarily have access to those resources, but they could, you know, find a phone and call. Like that's a little easier than finding a computer to be able to log on to, right? so they are putting together one talk in church number that they're all going to share and they're using their digital receptionist that it's it's going to be super duper simple it's just going to say these white flag shelters are open today here are the addresses and here are the times and so they're going to use that so they only have one phone number to communicate across every like no matter like the entire network is going to use the same phone number and it's now going to be a talk in church number uh and then that will be text like text enabled, so they'll be able to push an option to have the the Google Maps link sent to them, so they can tap out on a cell phone and get directions either by car, or walk, or bus. Like, and how cool is that that they can use that to serve their community in that unique way? Uh, I love the the ingenuity behind it because you know, I'm thinking, oh, church self or like church phone systems, but this is like right. a community outreach system. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other word that's incredible. Sorry, I got excited and I cut you off. Yeah, I'm sorry. Keep going. No, that's, just, that's just so dope. I think, and I, th- I, I think, I think it particularly like pokes my heart because I, I used to work at a gospel rescue ministry and the phone rang off the hook. And so I remember like we would take, we would take turns, like we would take turns because that's being the operator in that, that position at, at the ministry that I, I was on staff at was, um, it was hard to staff. I'll just say that um, because it's a hard job. It's very heavy. Um, and so a lot of us other staff members would actually take rotations like of, of working in that, uh, working in that role. And so I just, yeah, man, like, and we had connections with other, like other rescue ministries that were like in our area, other homeless shelters, but it was all, it was all manned, right? Like it was all manual. So we would have the conversations with these people and don't get me wrong. It was op- awesome opportunities for gospel, you know, presentations. And we, it, it was, it was a very unique blessing to be able to work in that. But I think having it be automated, right? Like serves, you know, cause what if somebody has to go to the bathroom, you know what I mean? Like, or so there's all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, that just, it just pokes my heart in a special way. That's awesome. Yeah. That was really like, that was one of the ones where after I got off that zoom with that pastor, I was like, whoa, like that's making a difference in like a way that I never would have like thought about. Um, we are also seeing churches use uh, talk and church has a teams feature. And so you can take any of your people that are your callers that can make and receive calls for your church. You can take them and put them into groups of people. So um, when you put them in the group of people, basically the, the phone system operates a little bit differently. It goes from sending the call to one person's cell phone to sending the call to everybody's cell phone at once. And then whoever on that team answers the call first, they get it. Phone stops ringing for everybody else. And so I uh, was working with a, a church local to me that uh, they use that on their outreach days. So like 
one day of the week they have uh, a huge food pantry that you know hundreds of people come through and so they put their team on food pantry duty and so everybody on the on the team can answer the food pantry calls as they come in um, and get, like because people that are calling that line have a specific need and so all of them are ready to be able to answer those calls so that way like if the call gets delivered to you know the pastor um, and another call comes in, it can get delivered to the next staff person. So like it really um, supercharges their phone in a way that um, they could pass those calls from person to person without having to manually do it. Um, and so that church now is using that strategy across all of their outreaches. So like when they have a Thanksgiving turkey drive, like they're doing these like free turkey baskets around Thanksgiving time, um, they're going to use that number and use the team's function to be able to deliver it to whichever person needs to answer the call, not just one person, but like whoever is available on the whole team. Um, so that's a really, like really cool way to use teams. Like I thought of it more from the perspective of like, okay, these are your office staff. So we can put your office staff in a team and you can right, pull right. one to reach the office team. Whoever's available in the right. office can grab that. But like yeah. thinking about using that for ministry specific things, I was like blown away. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, gosh, that's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that first? No, I'm just like, hey, I'm going to steal your idea and use that to teach other churches how to yeah. do this well, right? Like, yeah. Um, yeah, so I thought that white white church shelter was really awesome. Um, and then also using it for the food pantry was a yeah. really good way to use, use the teams. Um, yeah, I just think talking church can be, it's so versatile, yet it's so simple. Yeah. And I think that's the magic in it is like, it's mm -hmm. simple enough that anybody can use it straight straight away. 30 yeah. minutes or less, but it's so yep. powerful that you can get people signed up for VBS or tell yeah. people about shelters. Like, it's just, it's amazing. Well, and I think one thing that's really important and something that I know that I, I teach when I do the demos and the live trainings, and I think both of you do as well, the idea that, yes, it is a very powerful you know, technology. It has a lot of features that can help churches in many different ways but you don't have to do it alone and you don't have to do everything at once. So <laughs> what advice would you give someone that's like, yeah, that all sounds great, but also my head is spinning. Like what, what would you say sure. to them? <laughs> Trying anything new can be scary, whether it's yoga or CrossFit or a new recipe, like it, it's intimidating, right? So just the same thing with a, a phone solution or a texting solution, it can be intimidating. Start small and don't go it alone. You know, start small, master that one thing, call in reinforcement or help when you need it. Once you get that one thing mastered, then you can add on the next thing. Like just make those incremental changes that are tiny. And if you just do a little bit every every day or every time you log in, before you know it, you're hundred percent better, right? Or you're hundred percent down the road further than you thought you'd ever be. Like it's just about making those small changes, starting small, dreaming big. Yeah. Very well said. One of my pastor's favorite things, uh, one of my pastor's favorite things that he says is all it takes is one degree of change at the time. Mm -hmm. Like before you, before you know it, you're turned all the way around. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. one degree. Yeah. All you have to do. Mm. Yeah. That's good to remember in all the things. Um, okay. So as we wrap up today, April, is there any other encouragement you want to give our frazzled to, well, hopefully more focused church communications people. Right. That's our goal is to, in, you know, Jesus name. we always, yeah. we, you know, we may start frazzled, but we end focused. Is there anything that um, you want to tell our, um, our listeners, our watchers? I'm still, I, I'm mm -hmm. still wrapping my head around the whole video thing, guys. I'm still, um, our people. Yeah. <laughs> it's our, I'll just say our people. Yeah. Yeah. There are people, anything you want to tell them, any encouragement you want to give them today? I think the thing that I needed to hear the most when I was in, the church world was that what I was doing mattered. It's making a difference and it is discipleship. So, you know, you're doing a great job. It's like the whole, like, you're doing a great job, mom. You're doing a great job, church leader. You are. And um, just go for it. Take the leap of faith because if you don't change anything, tomorrow is going to be exactly the same, right? Like if you want to make improvements in your communication, if you want the tech world to get easier, you just got to start somewhere. So take a leap of faith. What's the worst that can happen? That's right. It takes it, you know, you do have to put in a little bit of effort, but you're not alone. Um, and like you said, what you're doing matters. It, 
you know, period, full stop. So uh, thank you so much for that encouragement. That is a wrap on today's show. Thank you, April, for joining us today. We appreciate you. We appreciate your time. We know you have talk uh, talk in church members that you need to get um, connected with. So we appreciate you hopping in here. Um, you guys, we would love to hear from you. If you want to head to the comments of this video and share any thoughts that you have about this episode, we would love to hear that. And also in the show description today, we are going to make sure that we share the link so that you can go attend a live demo with April so she can walk you through and you can actually see the platform and see how it works. You can see the digital receptionist. You yes. can see all of those things, how to create a team, how to just get started with like a basic. And you get to talk to April. Yeah, voicemail. Also get to hang out with her because she's fantastic. One of my favorite people. Um, so if you're listening, check the show notes. If you're watching, check the description. We will have the live um, demo link in there for you. And also if you're ready to jump on it, you can start a free trial. And if you want to know how tech tools like Talk in Church can help you spend less time worrying about technology and doing more of what you love in your ministry and in your personal life, make sure you subscribe wherever you are listening to this episode so you don't miss out on future ones.